Dok Kingwan had kith hinudikyaang. Sandra Segundo hinudikyaang. Hello, my friends. Gadok Kingwan is my hiding name. It means little doll looking around. And Sandra Segundo is what I'm called. Today, I want to share a book that I created about five years ago. It was published and it took 10 years to finish all the illustrations uh, and the song, the Haida song that I composed for the book. Um, the reason it took so long is because I was raising three little ones and working full time. And books, you know, they take a while to complete, especially if you're doing all of the artwork. The story just flowed right out of me, but it took a while to finish all the illustrations. And I wanted to write children's books because I wanted to correctly represent my people. A lot of indigenous books were written by non-indigenous people. And when I grew up, that just didn't make sense to me. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to start writing indigenous children's books and creating because we wanna be represented correctly. And what better way to learn about somebody's culture than to learn from somebody from that culture, right? I agree. <laughs> So this is my book called Killer Whale Eyes, written and illustrated by me, Sandra Segundo. <laughs> I created this whale tale from Haida stories that were passed down over the years. Our people have a powerful connection to the orca. This ancient relationship is reflected in our matrilineal clan system, regalia, art, songs, and stories. We consider them family and treat these lives with honor and respect. Way back in time, about 423 years to be more exact, in Haida village by the sea, a little girl was born with eyes like no other. Her eyes were unique and as blue as the ocean deep. When her beloved Haida people looked into these deep blue eyes, a feeling of quiet wonder came over them, like when you look out to sea on a warm summer day and know that the world is magic. The little girl belonged to the killer whale house, one of the many crest houses and clans in the village and she loved to play in the water. As a young girl, her favorite playtime activity was swimming with the sea otters. She liked to hold the tiny babies in her hands. She was so gentle and kind that the mama otters trusted her with their little ones. They too felt a quiet wonder when they looked into her eyes. During these alone times with her friends of the sea, she sang her song. It was a song that the people came to know and love for it echoed the wondrous sounds of the ocean. As she grew into a young woman, her chana, which means grandpa, taught her how to carve. She showed amazing talent in this skill. Together, they worked on a very special canoe. When the canoe was finished, the villagers prepared for a potlatch celebration. Everyone was so busy that they did not notice that their daguang, which means dear one, was not helping. She was down by the water's edge, gazing at the canoe. Gradually, a warm feeling began to build inside her chest. She closed her eyes and imagined herself far from land, paddling strong and fast. She opened her eyes and to her great surprise, she wasn't just imagining it. The village was ready to celebrate. They called out to their Deguang. Hawit Deguang. 
no answer. The canoe and girl were gone. Exhausted from searching that night, the villagers went into their warm long houses to rest. Their thoughts and prayers were with their Duguang who had disappeared on the sea. Chana would not leave the water's edge. Nana tried to bring him in out of the cold, but he would not budge. He just stared out to sea. So she wrapped him in a warm blanket and went inside. As the sun rose the next morning, Chana was still waiting. His eyes were tired and his body was chilled from the cool sea air. Suddenly he saw the canoe. It was floating in with the tide. How happy he was. But when the canoe reached the shore, Chana could only see her clothes and her paddle. She wasn't there. Time passed as it always does. About four seasons to be more exact. Summer, winter, spring, and fall. Yet the hearts of the people still ached. The people of the Killerwell house decided to have a ceremony in honor of their Duguang. Since her disappearance, a canoe had never been used and the people knew this was not right. So the canoe was once again carried to shore and launched. The people plunged their paddles into the water and they were on their way. They paddled to the beat of Chana's drumming and sang their Duguang special song. Sigaget Udijam Sigaget Udijam Di ho kya gums Ho rudangam Sigaget Udijam Sigaget And that means I am a child of the ocean. I hear her calling to me through the song of my relative killer whale. I hear her calling to me. Just then, a pod of killer whales surfaced. They too sang a song and it calmed the people. Slowly the canoe drifted to a stop. The people and the whales had no fear of one another. They shared a peaceful love and respect. Chana looked into the eyes of one of the whales and saw that it was crying. He told the whale, come closer, come closer. He looked, they looked into each other's eyes and he understood that these were not tears of sadness, but of joy. In that moment, he realized that this whale had his granddaughter's beautiful eyes and spirit. It was their Duguang. Oh, how their hearts were full of love and amazement as Kunjadas, which means whale girl, greeted the people how they had missed one another. For you see, she wasn't lost after all. She had just joined her loved ones of the sea. And even though she had left her human life behind, Kunjadas knew she and the Haida people would one day reunite. Although they lived in different worlds, they would always be close to help, comfort, and love each other. After all, family is family. Together, the people and the whales felt the ever so quiet wonder that told them this world is truly magic. The end. How are the gongs? Thank you, dear ones.